Congressman John Lewis was a politician, a preacher, and a peace builder. In his personal life and in his political life, he practiced the principles of nonviolent action. John Lewis sponsored legislation that would spread the principles of nonviolent action and sponsoring activities within the State Department and at the U.S. Institute of Peace. And in 2022, we established the Gandhi King Global Academy. This is the unit that teaches and trains frontline peace builders throughout the world. And as part of that, in 2024, the Institute established the John Lewis Peace Fellowship. This fellowship brings people from around the world to come to the Institute here in Washington for two months, where they engage with our units, they engage with civil society groups, they enhance their skills, and they develop projects that they will implement when they return home. These peace builders, these John Lewis fellows, then become ambassadors of John Lewis in those countries and carrying and instilling others with the principles of nonviolent action. Assalamu alaikum. Magandang araw. I am Aliyah Banyaga Adam and I am a passionate advocate for peace in the Mangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao communities in the Philippines, Southeast Asia. My name is James Komengi. I am from the Hela province in Papua New Guinea. I have been working in the space of uh, disasters, responding to disasters. Uh, my name is Madeleine Massino Avignon. I am the co-founder and country director of Communities Organizing for Haitian Engagement and Development, which is COFED, and I am from Haiti. My name is Alois Mawa. I'm coming from uh, DRC, Eastern DRC. Uh, I, I am a director, the director of the Living Peace Institute. My name is Alba Purroy. I come from Venezuela. I'm the director of Red Dialogo, which is a network of women peace builders. And we have a network that is about 200 uh, women around the, the country. Our journey began by proudly wearing the John Lewis t-shirts that has a good troublemaker word at its back. And wearing that shirt already challenged me to be a good troublemaker. It was a really remarkable uh, trip to my life as a social activist. To be in touch with people that lived uh, that experience in the 60s in the United States was really amazing. They speak about their leaders uh, by their heart. So we have the feeling that they are really sharing their own story and experience. Well, I picked the pen up and I said, John, this is a nice pen. Where did you get this pen from? He said, that's the pen that President Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act. I went from just holding this pen to tears just started flowing. Here, the five and dime stores were segregated as well. You know, if you wanted a hot dog or something when you went in the five and dime, you, you did have to stand. But it was something about the black community that protected us. Churches have succeeded in that area to really bring black communities, African American communities together. Ebenezer Baptist Church, uh, we had a chance to pray inside uh, with the population, the community. The civil rights movement was started from the churches. Yeah. So Martin Luther and then inspiring uh, John Lewis and them teaming up, building a network, leading a big number of people and always maintaining uh, nonviolence. Even when they were faced with violence, they upheld nonviolence. So we also traveled to Alabama. 16th Baptist Church, yeah, that is in Birmingham. 
you feel the killing of innocent girls. Both of four of them was killed by the bombs. It was very emotional, and because for what they went through, looking at the museums and and the different things that happened, especially the Bloody Sunday when we walked the Petrus Bridge. For me, the bridge symbolized like a victory, the victory to to access vote rights for minority or for the African Americans. In Montgomery, we were privileged to visit the Legacy Museum. In the Legacy Museum, we engaged with exhibits that traced the history of racial injustices from enslavement to mass incarceration. And just by seeing those pictures and video footages, those sculptures, reading those powerful narratives, those heartbreaking testaments, inspires me. And resonated with the quote of John Lewis when he said, never ever be afraid to make some noise and get, to get in trouble, the trouble, necessary trouble. John Lewis was a, uh, uh, was satisfied with life and his achievement, his mission in life. And he also acknowledged that he had done enough and that his life was ending. Uh, and so he called out to the younger generation to keep, keep on fighting the good fight. I think that it's our job now as this generation uh, to continue to do better <laughs> and to uh, take what, to have the courage that they have. John Lewis was seeing the vision in the sense that every country should be in peace, in love and reconciliation. And it was very easy to figure out how from Congo, from different countries, we are also part of the vision of John Lewis. Though he was fighting for civil rights in the U.S., uh, working locally, but was also thinking very globally. It is important to spread this information wider, not only in the United States, also all over the world. I'm